the Bob Bowlesby move. Okay. It's been easy to make him a target and pick on his unawareness and so forth. And we have done exactly that right here for the past week concerning this situation and in previous weeks concerning other not so important situations as it plays out now. This is all that matters. But I will say that I, I'm i intrigued. I'm somewhat amused, since I don't have a stake in the game, uh, by his guts, by the bold move that he and the rest of the Big 12 are making, whether that's because they, A, legitimately have a claim that can be proven in their response to ESPN or their, not their response, their initiation of the cease and desist letter, uh, or whether that's just a bold move that he is making in the Big 12 because they are grasping at straws to try to come up with something, or know that they are doomed or have a reasonable projection that they're doomed, and why not take a swipe at uh, ESPN slash Texas Oklahoma on the way out, on the way down, why not get your last few uh, punches thrown to cause some level of damage or at least cause some public perception that this hasn't been done on the up and up? Whatever the answer is, I don't know, but uh, I think it's intriguing to see. Yeah, it's very intriguing. I mean, I think to your point, Mark, we can go a lot of different angles with this. When you specifically look at the financial side of things, you can still go a ton of different angles with this i think the prevailing comment is that that i've heard and just me personally kind of thinking through this is obviously i mean kind of impressing you know to a certain extent to see what um what bob bowlesby has done over the last you know a few days i think it's the most uh, i think it's the strongest position that he's had really since he's been the commissioner of the Big 12. And I think, you know, I, I say this to say, should would he have been as aggressive in terms of, you know, the way he's attacking ESPN and even attacking Oklahoma and Texas? You know, I, I think, you know, he might not have found himself in the Big 12 as a whole in this position because, look, I think when you, when you look at this over, over, the few, over the last few years, the last 10 years, that – you know, Oklahoma and Texas have had a desire to, at the very least, um, advance this conference where, where, from where it is today in terms of bringing in more more teams. All our, the Big 12 has had opportunities to, to, to really advance, you know, the, the conference in terms of getting back to 12 teams, and it just – the Big 12 wasn't interested. There was a few teams from the AAC that were basically, yeah, we're, we're ready to come over. They weren't ready to do it. And I think so. So a lot of these things, you know, you 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 feel bad for him a little bit in terms of, you know, your best two teams are, you know, market wise and, and from Oklahoma, from a production perspective and from Texas, from a, you know, from a brand perspective or are leaving so i think he's in desperation mode obviously at, at this point but it's you know i think one of the things that i've talked about with, with some of my friends is it's it's kind of it's almost funny looking at the big 12 and and what is being perceived especially right now as the weakest power five conference in the country and, and going going up toe to toe against a, a conglomerate like espn uh, it, it so i think in terms of you know who's who's going to blink first and and look the financial side of things is is also interesting the Big Twelve you know last year they they gathered in in terms of the payout was around around in the mid thirties from a thirty million dollar perspective you know it, it I I have seen it been seen without Oklahoma and Texas they're around maybe seven to nine million so that's obviously that certainly that's twenty twenty five and beyond so. I mean that almost lends it to say what what are these teams going to do when when you think about it from specifically the teams that you would expect that's sort of the leaders kind of moving this decision one way or the other I would say probably West Virginia and Oklahoma State and Texas Tech kind of come to mind as those three teams are are, are probably the teams that are you know positioned best to you know to lead this conference from a from a strategy perspective going forward so you know how are, are they willing to wait out, you know, the, the, these five years, these four years and possibly miss out on an opportunity to, you know, if you're West Virginia, join the ACC. If you're Oklahoma State, 
potentially I've seen a lot of news about joining the Big Ten as you know potentially an option for them. So, and, it, and it's only going to take one, right? One if if one team decides this is the move for us, we're not. We don't think Oklahoma and Texas are going to stay in the big are, are going to stay here in the Big Twelve until twenty twenty five. One way or the other, we got to look out for ourselves here. So that's it. the 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 blinking is going to be just just so interesting to watch and and really just understanding exactly you know what their you know what their perspective is going in going into this season um, because you know I, I think they know. I mean, if if we see that out there about you know potentially you know Texas getting that money from the uh, from the Longhorn Network to to pay those to pay that out clause and then just be out they're probably thinking the same thing so yeah it's just the the chess match is going to be so intriguing to watch but i just thought that uh once i sized it up after this happened that uh those two schools versus the other eight is just the biggest gap i think that exists in college football so it did just irreparable damage that to, to the league where it can survive as it currently stands. So to Jason's point, either let's say they do have to hang together for, let's say three football seasons. I think that if West Virginia gets an offer from the ACC, they need to go and they will go. Uh, but it's going to be a race to see, as I outlined on a video right after the, all this news broke, basically a race between the big 12 and the rest of the country as to, can the Big 12 add before it's subtracted from them to stabilize the league going forward before the other conferences poach from them? And then it's just going to dissolve and deteriorate because who's going to who's going to jump on a four team league? Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right. And when you look at the just the final point I'd make here about the financial side of things, I think it's also important to understand what goes into this decision. Is if we're in the normal year, maybe some of these teams have a little bit more patience in terms of financially being able to to wait this out. But coming on the heels of a pandemic and still in the middle of a pandemic, you know, in terms of understanding how big of a hit financially some of these institutions had last year you know, makes the decision maybe a little bit different. So uh, so I think that's also, you know, something to think about in terms of, you know, when, when the, some of these teams are making this decision. So, you know, and kind of looking at, you know, what, what the future for the Big 12 and, you know, from a from a positional perspective as well for, for these teams, you know, looking at those three that we mentioned, if West Virginia gets an offer from the ACC, they're gone immediately. I, I, I wouldn't. I think that they wanted to be in the ACC to begin with uh, over the Big 12 from from everything that I've heard and just in the fact that you know now they're in the they're in the Big 12 uh, and if they got that offer to, to join the ACC I think they're you know they're immediately gone and if they are then you kind of everything kind of breaks loose but I think the, the other thing that that's been you know there's a lot of, there's been a lot of rumors that you know hey Oklahoma State Texas Tech, you know, maybe TCU, maybe Baylor, you know, would be a good position for them to go to the to the Pac-12. And I think one of the things that came out of the Pac-12 media days was really that none of those schools are, the Pac-12 is not really interested in any of those schools. So you almost kind of put the Pac-12 aside. And, and, and when you think of the Big Ten, unless they were just, unless we got to a position where we know, okay, we know that the, that the super conferences are, are upon us. We don't really necessarily know that at this point, you know, the SEC is at 16, but what, what do the other conferences do? So, you know, adding Iowa state and Kansas doesn't really do much for them. So you, you kind of, you kind of put them on the back burner a little bit. So I, so I think, and even Texas tech. So I think it's West Virginia and Oklahoma state. I've seen, I've seen some some news, you know, it's just some, some rumors, and they're, they're gaining a little bit of traction that, you know, Oklahoma State might be in a decent position with with potentially getting an invitation from the Big Ten. So I think West Virginia and Oklahoma State are the two teams to really kind of look out for, you know, in this. So when when you look at those teams being able to to move to move to different conferences and, and maybe blow this up before before it even happens. So I've heard from a number of sources, both online and those people that come on here, 
as experts in their with their particular conference or team that Oklahoma State doesn't qualify academically for the Big Ten yeah. in terms of the AAU. I, and, and I've heard it so many times, I'm forgetting who does and who does not from the Big 12. But I know that Oklahoma State was one of those that do not. And that's also an issue with the Pac-12. The Big Ten and the Pac-12, it seems on the surface that they're more tied to their academic requirements and restrictions than the other conferences. Because this has come up now every time there's been expansion and realignment uh, about the Big 12 or the Big 10's standards and the Pac-12's standards in, in that area. Yeah, I think you're you're absolutely right, Mark. And that's one of the reasons why the Pac-12, I think, is, is kind of, you know, snubbing their nose at, at some of the Big 12 teams, just, you know, to be – to be frank, and you know, I, I've heard that specifically that comment commentary about the Big Ten, and I think Iowa State and Kansas are the two schools that would possibly f fit into that AAU membership. If I if I'm not mistaken, I think both of those schools are the two of the only schools specifically left in, in the Big Twelve that are uh, that would what fit in there. But when you think about the Big Ten side, that doesn't really get them anything either either way. Uh, outside of basketball, obviously, but that, you know, I think this is it's purely a financial decision at this point. But I think we, w the thing that I've heard is that if the Big Ten would be willing to to sort of kind of forego that AAU thought process for, for Oklahoma State, that would, be a, uh, that would be a landing spot. And it almost seems like, you know, that obviously we talked about the battle between you know, the SEC and the Big 12 were really kind of waiting it out. And it might just as easily be a, a battle between the Big 12 and, and the AAC to see, you know, to see where that where that falls. I think we've seen, you know, kind of the basis of the cease and desist order was was that the AAC and ESPN kind of, you know, you know being the catalyst of, of that is that the AAC looking to, to pick up three to five members and, and even, even as much as, you know, kind of bringing the – all of the teams over for um, for a a merger type of type of situation. I heard someone say they need to merge together and just call themselves the Big American. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that's that's a decision that will also be interesting if it looks like they're in a position where either the Big Twelve is going to try to pull some some teams from the AAC or the AAC wants to pull, you know, from the big 12, who wins, who wins that battle? I mean, at this point it's, you know, before, before Oklahoma and Texas, obviously Oklahoma are the big 12, the better conference. Now uh, they're probably even, and you could even make an argument that the, that the AAC is a stronger conference with, you know, without Oklahoma and Texas in the big 12. So, um, so that's another interesting battle as, as we look at. So I, I say that to say that we're not going to have, the daily um, updates, but I think the you know the, the intermingling of, of how this will um, how this will play out will be will be very intriguing to watch over the next few months. We all have to remember this, so I'll remind everyone in the chat and whoever watches this video, eventually that we're sports minded people, so we care about sports and yep. then specifically college football. So we look at the football and think, oh, well, that conference should go get them. They're a great football team or they're a good football team. They would be a good ad. That, that's all we're thinking about. And then some of us secondarily will think about the money. Okay, like I made the comment, hey, if I'm the ACC, I go get UCF. If, if I'm trying to stay up with the SEC, I go get UCF. I, I twist Notre Dame's arm, hopefully. I would have actually twisted their arm, as I stated a zillion times, this time last year during the pandemic when they got them to play for a year and said, you want to play football this year? Uh, sign a 20-year contract. Anyway, I would have twisted their arm last year. You get Notre Dame and UCF into the ACC. Wow. And with that Orlando market and the Florida recruiting and the alumni base and all that, I would go after UCF. Anyway, we're thinking football. Then we think money and what we know about tv markets on all, all that sort of thing we're forgetting as i as i mentioned and, and jason uh expounded on it the the academics part of this these there are institutions that care believe me if you could go to some of these institutions they know that they have a football team and there are heavy hitters within that institution but that football program 
they know that the stadium gets loud on Saturday and the games are on TV and they make us some money. But I think we get a little bit too football minded and we know football's king among athletic departments and football's flipping the bill for women's soccer and all this stuff. But when you start to look at some of these football numbers and they're in the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars, but then you look at some of these endowments that these, uh, conferences have with their member institutions because of their high academic ranking. And I might be playing with the terminology loosely here, but you're talking about these $10 billion uh, academic uh, grants and endowments that they have because of uh, having certain level of research institutions and, and all of that. And, we don't we don't know that there's there's it, the academic side is not just because that's why these institutions were built in the first place so we should be giving preference to academics number one number two that there is huge money in academics as well and sometimes it actually even supersedes the football which is a shock to many of us right. yeah and I, and I think you know I think the prevailing comment of or the prevailing thought I guess I should say is why, why did Oklahoma and Texas make this change? And I think you, it's 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 financial. I mean, it first and foremost, you know, because I had saw I, I saw something yesterday that stated that with Oklahoma and Texas being in the SEC, the the revenue yearly that they would they they would bring in would be somewhere in the neighborhood of one point three billion dollars each year, and and so understanding that Oklahoma maybe not necessarily on the football side of it, but some of their other sports are a little bit behind in terms of what those facilities look like compare, comparatively to the ACC, to the SEC, specifically the baseball, you know, the baseball stadium, the softball field, things like that. So I think that's one of the things that was a big part of the, the thought process. We get this additional money. It allows us to, um, to, to put ourselves in a position to, uh, to improve you know, Im improve those facilities, improve at, at all different, you know, all different line down down the line, and all different sports for um, for Oklahoma. I mean, Texas is certainly probably there, maybe to a better extent than Oklahoma is from a facilities perspective across the board. But it puts Oklahoma into a much in a much better position there. And you know, thinking about the academic side of it, yeah, I think that's obviously. I don't think that's probably the prevailing thought for the SEC. But to your point, Mark, I think for for conferences like the Big Ten, for conferences like the Pac-12, and, and what that endowment looks like in terms of the research um, institutions that that they bring to the table, it's it's not necessarily our friend Tony Siracusa has mentioned several times the the Pac-12 is not going to make a decision from a realignment perspective only for for athletics. It's going to be it's going to be a joint decision. For you know, from athletic and academics uh, side, but for Oklahoma and Texas, I think this was mostly no, no matter what they're saying behind closed doors. I think it's it's mostly about money and and mostly about positioning themselves to be more competitive through throughout all of their sports. 